All right, so I'm going to start off with the warm-up on this handout. Um, a and B are independent events such that probability of A is 0.3, probability of B is 0.5. So first off, to find the intersection of events that are uh, independent, you multiply the probabilities together, so the intersection of the two is going to be 0.15. Okay, now that I know the intersection of this 0.15, I can find the union for question B uh, using the law of probability, which says the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the intersection is going to give me um, the union. Why do we do minus the intersection? Because when we've got a Venn diagram, if I've got probability of A being the blue circle, probability of B being the pink circle, we've overlapped parts here, and this part has been counted twice, which is why we have to subtract the intersection. So anyways, when I figure this out, I end up with 0 0.65, 65%. So now that I know um, uh, this information, I can make my Venn diagram. So first thing I did was I said, okay, I've got 0.15 as the intersection, so I put 0.15 here in the middle, in the football-shaped section. Then I said, okay, well, probability of A is supposed to be 0.3, so this has to be 0.15 in order for these two to add to 0.3. Now I said, notice this is 0.5, so if this is 0.15, I did, I did 0 0.5 minus, uh, minus 0 0.15, and I get uh, 0.35, and that's how I got this value here. Now we know the union of all this, this plus this plus this, is 0.65. So to figure out the value that goes out here, I, I do 100% minus 65%, and the value out here is 0.35. Okay, so now we want to solve question C. The probability of not being in circle B um, intersection with A. So not being in circle B is being outside of this pink circle, uh, but being inside A is this greenish part right here at 0.15. Okay, question D. The probability of being in B um, given that you're not in A. So using my formula packet, I could say, okay, so what's the probability of being in B? intersection with A prime divided by the probability of being in A prime. So probability of being in A prime is outside of the blue circle. So if being in the circle, blue circle is 0.3, being outside of the circle is 0.7. And I could have just looked here and I said 0.35 plus 0.35 is outside of the blue circle, which gives me 0.7. Okay. The intersection of B and not in A is this orange region because I'm inside B, but I'm outside of the blue circle. So then I divide these together and I get 0.5. Okay, now let's get started on the, the handout. Okay, so we want to find the distance of the diagonal here, okay? And um, she's allowed to carry it on the plane. Uh, if it's the value is less than 56. So uh, before just um, accepting this formula for finding the distance, let's think of this as um, Pythagorean theorem. So um, you may have learned that if I've got this is A, this is B, and this is C, and that's a right triangle. We know to find the value of C is that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? Well, you know that, uh, so for solving for C, I can take the square root of both sides, and then I know that C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. Okay, now I'm going to draw this in a three-dimensional shape where um, the length here is A, the length here is B, the length here is C, and I'm drawing um, 
three-dimensional box. Okay. And now I want to go from this point here to this point here. Okay. And um, let's call this height here D. Okay. So this triangle right here that's sitting vertical, I'm going to redraw it here. Okay. And I want to find this diagonal length from one corner of the box to the other corner of the box. And we know this height here is D. And this bottom length is C. And so the length of the blue line, let's just call it E. So if I'm trying to find the length of the blue line, I can say E squared is equal to D squared plus C squared, right, using Pythagorean theorem again. So if I'm solving for E, I can say E is equal to the square root of D squared plus C squared. But didn't we just say that C is equal to this, right? So I can replace C with this, and now I've got d squared plus square root of a squared plus b squared, and all of that is squared, right? And hence, I've derived the formula that the, the length of a diagonal inside a box is going to be the square root of each side of the box squared. So where D is the height, A is the length in this direction, B is the length in this direction. So let's see how I've applied this in examples uh, 17. So I'm trying to find this length, AC, and um, I've got this length, 40, and I've got this length here which is 30 and I've got this height here which is 25 okay so square all these values add them together take the square root and I get the length of AC this is smaller than 56, so yes, she can carry this on the plane. Okay, so let's talk about what we did here. I want to find the length of this diagonal, but I'm also going to try to find the angle between the blue diagonal and the edge BC. So, using what we just did on the previous page, um, the length of the blue line diagonal is 14 squared plus 11 squared plus 6 squared, which I add, square these values, add them together, and I get the length of the blue line is 18.7883. Okay, so now I need to find this angle. We already know this is 14, and uh, because of the way this is inside the box, we know that at angle C, uh, we're going to have a right angle. So I can redraw this triangle. We're, uh, we've got A, B, C, and we know that angle C here is a right angle. So now I can use, um, I can look at so Katoa and say, okay, so <clears throat> this is a right angle, and we, uh, across from the right angle we've got the hypotenuse, and next to the angle here that we're trying to find, we have the adjacent, so I'm going to use cosine since I've got adjacent and hypotenuse. So uh, the cosine is going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And then divide those together, I get this decimal. And so to find the angle, I have to do the inverse cos. So second cos is, gives me the inverse cos of this decimal value, and I get the angle is 41.8 degrees. You might want to hit pause if you need more time to look at this. Okay, 
um, find the length of BD. So BD is the bottom of this cube. So um, I, I'm not doing this in three dimensions. I just 13 squared plus 13 squared, add those together, take the square root. The bottom of the box, this length, is 18.4. Okay, so now I know that's 18.4. You already know the height of the box is 13. And we're trying to find the angle between F, B, D, and B. So F, D, and B is already drawn for you. So I already know the opposite side is 13. The adjacent side is 18.4. Using opposite and the adjacent, I could use tangent to solve this problem. Uh, so we've, now we've got 13 is the opposite side. The adjacent side is 18.38. Um, divide those together. Inverse tan, so I hit the second button in tangent, and then I get my angle is 35.3. Some other people I noticed in class solved for the length of the blue line. And if you've got the length of the blue line also, then you could use sine or cosine also, depending on which side, two sides you're going to use. I'm going to do the rest of the handout on a different 